May 27th, this is the birthday of St. Petersburg. 300 years ago, in 1703, the Russian Tsar Peter the Great signed the order to establish the fortress of St. Peter and Paul. When I was leaving from St. Petersburg this year, this birthday of the city was celebrated and it made me think about two things. First, it was really hard to believe that this city, which was so important for the Russian history, which used to be the capital of the Russian Empire for 200 years, is actually so young for the European history. Just 300 years and six years, just a bit more. And second thought I had was, I cannot believe that it was a beautiful day in May, and not the classical St. Petersburg nasty fall when this city was established. I truly believe it did happen with people's feet in the mud, with their head in the city had hiding in this very low, gray, rainy clouds, and the clothes tore open by this wind from the Finland Bay. I remember when I lived there, in November, all I wanted was to reduce the target on myself, <laughs> to hide my face, and run for the closest shelter. <coughs> So friends, we are not going there in November. Of course, Peter the Great, they had his own reason to build the city there in the middle of the swamp. But there is a legend which says that thousands of workers he brought to this place to build the city died. And then the very foundation of the city sits on their bones. I don't know if it's true or not, but that the wind comes from the Finland Bay and the flooding in St. Petersburg becomes a real danger to really feel their presence. Peter the Great created this city as a window to Europe. And, and right now it is probably one of the most beautiful cities in the Europe and certainly one of the most European cities in the Russian, but still, not November. <laughs> Let's wait for winter, which is coming. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do during winter in St. Petersburg? I'll tell you, we'll go to a museum. St. Petersburg has over 100 museums, so plan for at least a month. <laughs> the first weeks we will spend in the Hermitage, and then we will go to the Russian Museum. And then, my friends, we will go to watch the Russian ballet. The St. Petersburg city has over 100 ballet and other drama theaters. I actually went there this time, and ironically, my friend bought me the ticket to a concert of American choreography. <laughs> <laughs> it was still a trip, and I enjoyed it a lot. And I'm going to share a very important secret with you. If you go to the theater during winter in Russia, you have to take with you shoes to change. This is a dress code. Believe me or not, I made the mistake of not doing it once. What happened? Winters in St. Petersburg are very mild, actually. So what do you will have under your feet, I actually checked the word. I think it's called slush. Does it make sense? <laughs> Water and ice, and your feet will be wet. I was wearing a dress boots made of leather. Do you know what happens with leather? Yeah. Inside a warm room, it shrinks. I was forced to think about medieval inquisition. <laughs> Luckily, the play was very sad. 
So nobody was wondering why I was crying. <laughs> and I saw several people with tears in their eyes too. I don't know, was it about the play or the shoes? <laughs> <laughs> How do you know that the spring is closed in St. Petersburg? Everyone around you, even locals, will start to ask, do you know when the fountains are going to be open? Mm -hmm. This place is called Petergof or Petrodvarets. It's a summer palace of Ekaterina the Great. And it's one of the most beautiful ensembles of fountains and parks. I heard it many times when people think that it was made to be like French Versailles. And I don't like when people compare things, but believe me, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, the summer. The main attraction in summer in St. Petersburg is what we call white nights. I'm sure those of you who were to Alaska know what it is. Dawn at dusk meet in the middle of the night. So there is actually no night during June, just dawn and dusk. And what the best thing to do during this time? To travel the canals and rivers. To watch the bridges, there are all, over 800 bridges in St. Petersburg. And the main bridges are being drawn up to allow ships to pass by, maybe ships which are cruising the world, or container ships. And this is why St. Petersburg is called the Northern Venice. I did it this time, and I hope next time you will come with me. When I finished this presentation, I realized there was one color missing. There was no green. Not too much green. But believe me, St. Petersburg has so many parks. When I was there, tulips were flowering or blooming, lilac, sakura, bird, cherry. It was a beautiful time to visit St. Petersburg. It has many faces. It has thousands of stories. And I am sure if you go there, when you have an opportunity, you will find the place you like. Good afternoon, everyone, especially Tatiana. Tatiana was giving her second speech in engaging humor, and it was for evaluation and feedback. So as we know, with our navigation of pathways, she is in that speech where she gives it and wants to get really good feedback so that she can give it again or another speech like it but using the feedback that she receives. So I am going to tell you what I thought you excelled at, some things you can work on and how I want to have you challenge yourself for the next speech. Tatiana, you have such a subtle way of organizing your speeches and weaving in humor and it truly is your brilliance I think mm -hmm. as a speaker. How many of you noticed that she used the slides for talking about the seasons but there wasn't one for the fall? Did you notice? Mm -hmm. No, didn't notice. You did. <laughs> yes, that, that is her subtlety, but we know we're not supposed to go there in the fall. So why even talk about it, right? Except to warn us not to go. So just, it was brilliant, Tetiana. You made the audience laugh eight times that I counted. So did you engage with humor? Yes. And you, you excel at that. Using the slides was also something that you excelled at. I really liked how you had the different slides before in the beginning, and then you would use the different season for how we should, or what we should do during that season. Winter, we'd go to the museums, the ballet, 
spring, we check out the fountains, and in the summertime, which is when I want to go, we see the beautiful sky. Here's what you need to work on a little bit, and really, again, it's that second English language thing. A few grammar glitches with plurals and tenses, and I think your intro could have been a little bit more smooth. I think starting in May and then going to November and then back in May was a little rocky. So what I would recommend is really playing up the don't go in November. Start with fall and then go into the winter and follow the seasons chronologically. And that's what I want you to challenge yourself with. I want you to take those beautiful slides and organize the speech a little bit better with them following not going in November and winter, summer, or um, winter, spring, and summer. Okay. So well done. I can't wait to hear your speech taking the feedback and improving it.